Hi everyone, Tyson here. And this is a short video to accompany my tutorial in Computer Arts 212, where I talk about uh, using Photoshop's alpha channels to uh, create masks. Uh, naturally, there are just absolutely tons of different ways that you can go around creating masks and uh, extracting a specific part of a, an image in Photoshop. Um, but I've always found that this way, this method is um, a lot more precise. Uh, let me show you why. I mean, if we were to go with a clipping path, and we were to try and get all the detail around this image, we're going to end up sort of running into, into problems, yeah, especially around these areas where it becomes less defined. And um, yeah, clipping paths just tend to give you that kind of um, play school scissors kind of look to things. So yeah, I, I tend to uh, steer well clear of clipping paths, especially nowadays, is that uh, using channel masks integrates so well with other uh, Adobe packages. I don't know about you, but every time I see a video on YouTube or something about masking off an area it always tends to be quite a, a simple area to mask out. Um, the magic wand tool in this scenario uh, you can start building it up but straight away it starts to bleed out of the areas uh, that I really don't want. So again that can kind of be quite a messy process. But the thing about channels, if I flip over to the channel menu is that all the pixel data is already there for you. So it's just a natural way to capture, you know that you're going to capture the pixels that you're after. Um, when trying to identify what channel to use as your starting point, what you're looking for is um, high contrast between black and white. So at the moment you can see, obviously if I'm going for the butterfly, there's not that much high contrast between the, the areas that are skin and the areas that are the butterfly on that red channel. On the green channel it's getting a little bit better but definitely on the blue channel I've got a strong contrast between the background and the foreground. Yeah, these areas here they're going to get a little bit tricky but let's see what happens as we go along first thing to do is duplicate that channel um, call it mask because I like labeling stuff turn that on turn the others off okay so the first thing to do is just get rid of all of the excess data you don't need all the excess pixels you don't need Yeah, I could do it like that, or I could just draw the box and invert it. That's better. Okay. We can go, um, we can remove a lot more as well. I'll use the lasso tool, I'll use the polygon lasso tool, uh, which is L on your keyboard, and if you use Shift L, you'll. Uh, actually scroll through the different sorts of lasso. So yeah, it's a polygon one that I want. So yeah, using the uh, lasso tool, just roughly uh, get rid of some of this background stuff that we just don't need. I'm not being um, too careful here. As you know, when you're on deadline, it's all about just getting the job done as quick as possible. So, this is just to help me focus my attention on exactly what I'm working on and uh, not have to deal with too many unnecessary 
pixels. Next stage, bring up the levels, which is Command L. Use this light point sample tool here to create a white point on the image. That looks good. Um, let's try it here. No, I see I've blown out way too much detail there. Again, that's just a little bit too much detail gone. I'm looking at this this antenna that's here. I just want to make sure I retain that. Um, I need to darken it down now. But I've got to keep in mind that area up in the top left corner. Still want enough dark pixels in there. Slightly some definition between here and here. Thing I'll do. Okay, so next it's a case of using the uh, dodge and burn tools. Select the dodge tool first. Uh, the range is set to highlights, exposures are about 50%. And now it's a case of just brushing away pixels around the edge. Uh, of course, I am using a, um, a Wacom tablet. Here, yeah, you can be. You can see how my strokes are not exactly precise strokes. It can be quite brutal around the edges. In some cases, might take the strength up a little bit. Let's go eighty percent, eighty. Keep um, flipping between the mask and the actual image. That's by using the tilde key on your uh, keyboard. See exactly where I'm working and what parts I'm editing. does appear to be taking a little longer than normal, mainly because recording quick time and using Photoshop at the same time appears to be a bit of a struggle. lag on my machine. Okay, that will do for now. Back to the lasso tool. And I just want to fill in roughly yeah, again lots of bad lag on my machine because of quick time and the next stage is to um, just going to fill this in with black. But the next stage is to use the counterpart to the dodge tool, which is the burn tool. That's set to range shadows at 48%. This is going to start darkening down. pixels. You notice how that, as I'm brushing across there, I'm brushing across the white as well. But it's not bringing too much, uh, too many pixels back. 
because of the setting, because it is a you know, because it is a burn tool on shadows and that exposure. You can take the exposure up and down um, and it will dictate the strength. Yeah, see, it's, it, keeping these kind of characteristics around the edges, it's because it's, uh, it's so precise, this way of working, and catching all these little nuances, which are really nice. I mean, especially seeing as working with a mask, the uh, black area is going to be zero, transparent, and the white area is going to be solid. With that in mind, you know that areas of grey are going to be levels of transparency and that can lead to some pretty nice results very subtle results yeah okay I think what's going up on this top corner just gonna double click my mask which will bring up the uh, channel options. I just want to reduce the strength of that mask so I can see a little bit more the underlying image. Yeah, I'm going to go back to the dodge tool, knock out some of this grey around the edge here. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. I'm just going to tidy it up now by going to the brush tool. In fact, if I bring up my brush settings, hard round brush. I'll invert this mask now. And you know, that's what we're dealing with. Let's show you the image. In fact, again, let me um, just take the strength of the mask capacity back up. So you can see that that's what we're masking off. And you can obviously see those holes that I've left in. So this is where the using the brush tool. To uh, simply plug some of these gaps. Constantly hitting that tilde key. See it all in context. I'll take out that little stray one. If you've got your palette set to black and white, all you need to do is hit X and that just keeps flipping between uh, the uh, foreground colour and the background colour. Okay, so there you go. That's Works pretty good to me. Back to 100%. Yeah, 
Yep, nice, strong, sharp edges to it. You know, for I may want to tidy this up with a brush. I actually quite like it. Quite like the texture and the uh, the strands off the edge. Hope you find that uh, useful. This is Paul signing off. Take care.